So um, let's now go through the presentation, which is also on our website. Um, this is the, say, the, the standard machine vision presentation. We've been putting this together over the last uh, one or two years with um, tools on how to use our lens. The main part of the presentation is really how to combine our lens with off-the-shelf optics. So how to configure the optics. Um, but we'll also talk about drivers and software and um, look at some examples. So to give you a first also a very quick introduction on one page to our company. Um, we actually are celebrating our 10 year anniversary this year. We started in 2008, um, three people from a technical university in Switzerland. I'm one of the founders and now I'm responsible for marketing and sales. And so over these 10 years, we've, we've grown quite a bit. We're now, we're actually now 106, 130 people. Um, in Switzerland, there's about 80 people, of which about 40, 50 are R&D. So we have uh, most of our people actually in R&D. Um, and in, in Slovakia, we have a factory now with about 60 people producing um, a consumer product, which is um, a beam shifting device. We can talk about that, about that later. It's it actually designed for projectors to shift the, the beam in a projector system. But maybe it could be used on the camera side for image resolution improvement, or maybe on the um, with a 3D printing or something structured light. So there's also some vision uh, applications for this beam shifting device. So this has actually given us quite some revenue this year. So we can grow the team, and now we're about 130, and um, we're located in Switzerland. This is our building. Um, if ever you happen to be in Switzerland or Europe, please come and visit. Um, we produce there in our clean room all our lenses. And uh, that's where we also have some application engineering. And now most recently with the uh, office in Taiwan, actually we start to have a little application engineering lab also in Taipei. So maybe there's an opportunity to have some you know, local support um, also in Chinese to have some more you know, discussion on customer problems and maybe try out something in the local office if it's sometimes too long or too slow to talk to us in Switzerland. Um, so the lenses, uh, to give you an introduction of how they actually work, um, we mainly have these kind of two concepts, mechanical lens and electrical lens. The core of the lens is always the same. We start off with a container which has liquid inside and on the container is a membrane here this blue surface now when you push a ring into that membrane the more you push the more the liquid pushes back and then you get the convex lens now when you pull on the membrane you can actually go in the opposite you get concave lens now in this design we have one lens shaper that moves up and down this is typically how we do the mechanical lenses, where you can rotate the ring and the lens shaper goes in and out. And this is quite slow. Um, the electrical lenses are much faster. Here, the lens shaper is in a fixed position. And on the outside, in this thick part of the lens outside, there's a ring with a coil in it. And with the magnet, uh, magnet around, when you apply current to the coil, it will push down. So this is basically the model of the EL1030. With positive current, you can push down and you go from basically flat to convex. The EL16, the bigger lens, has the same layout, but you could also go in the opposite direction. The current, when it goes backwards, it will pull on the membrane and it will suck out the liquid and the lens goes negative. So this is basically how they work. And um, the, the obvious benefit, you know, for, for machine vision, the, the benefit for machine vision is that with this we can change the focus and increase the working distance range. So that's the key thing, bigger working distance range. Um, now, of course, you could also achieve bigger working distance with um, a smaller F number, a higher F number, smaller iris. 
to stretch your depth of field. But if you've been working with optics before, what you get here is very limited increase. So if you have really large distances, and especially for long focal lengths or high magnifications, this approach will not get you very far. Um, so if you can change the focus here, then you can actually now benefit from using um, low F numbers. You can get more light into your system. You use the lens to adjust the focus. We've seen it's very fast. And um, what actually customers like about it is sometimes they can measure um, multiple levels of a product. Maybe on a piece of glass, they can measure the top side and the back side with the same camera. But sometimes they actually just have uh, on the production line, one day is a big product, the next day maybe is a smaller product. And they only have to change maybe once per day or maybe once every month. But the point is it's easy to change. You don't have to touch anything. You can change from the software side. You can even go into your um, software maybe from the internet remote. So if the customer has a problem with the focus, um, you can maybe log in through your uh, system and you can change electrically the focus and you don't have to go and open up the machine, you know, touch the optics, close the machine and drive back because such an event can cost you half a day to go there, do something, go back. So actually the ease of installation and the flexibility is also what customers like with other lenses. Because the opt what Optitune sells is not um, a finished product. I mean, it's, it's a product, it's a lens, but it will not generate an image. So, if we will take our lens and um, put it in front of a camera, our lens alone will never um, take a picture, really. It's just um, an add-on. So, basically, there are three ways we can combine our lens with other optics. Very simply put, we can put our lens in the front, basically on the filter thread. Most C-mount lenses have a filter thread and we can put our lens in the front. That works very well for objects which are at quite a large distance. So from infinity up to maybe about a fifth of a meter, maybe 10 centimeters. If you go closer than that, you're probably better off with something on the right here. So the back lens configuration would be putting our lens between the C-mount lens and the camera. That is uh, mechanically very simple because we have C-mount on both sides. And actually a lot of customers think this is the most obvious thing to do. When they see our lens, C-mount on both sides, they just do this and they think, ah, oh, this is gonna work for all the lenses, but it doesn't, unfortunately, because when a C-mount lens is moved away from the camera, um, the image plane moves away as well. And this works if you have a long focal length. Then you can have a close-up picture, but for short focal length, this will not work at all. But very nice uh, solutions with 50 millimeter lenses like this one. And then for high magnifications or also telecentric optics, um, our lens really has to go somewhere in the middle, um, preferably close to the aperture stop. Um, because if we're in the front, then typically the entrance apertures will be too big or we are too sensitive in terms of um, what our lens will do to the image in the front. And if we're at the very back, right before the camera, then oftentimes the lens has no more effect. It doesn't have enough, um, we call it optical leverage how much does it focus, how much working distance does it change when you change the optical power of the lens. So let's look into these configurations in more detail. Um, so lens in front, the, the most obvious case, we looked at the first example in the demo. So this was, as I mentioned, a, a board lens or S-mount lens with uh, M12 um, red. Then there are adapters like this, which can go into the C-mount camera. And then when this lens goes in the camera, actually on the C-mount thread, there's maybe about three millimeters left. So our lenses with C-mount can go on top, right into the same camera. This is a very simple, very nice setup. Um, this works well with a 12 millimeter focal length, 
there are lenses with eight. Um, some other S-mount lenses as well. We actually have a list of S-mount lenses that you can work with. I will show you a list afterwards in the afternoon to give a few more examples. Then for the C-mount lenses, it's quite obvious. Uh, the filter threads that we support are M25.5, M27, and M30.5. Now some of the, sorry, maybe the screen is now in the way. So some of the um, lenses actually have a, a bigger filter thread like M30.5 or M40.5. Now we decided not to have adapters for the larger filter threads because if we put our lens in the front of a very large lens, there's a probably going to be an issue with field of view or with losing light. So we'll look at that in more detail. This is why we support only these three filter thread sizes. Um, here's an example of the EL16 mounted on these um, uh, Schneider lenses. They're available in uh, actually today also 25, 30, 38, 50 millimeters. I like this example because it's um, maybe the best configuration that we can propose for the large sensor format. 1.1 inch sensors and these lenses from Schneider have a very good resolution, so for 3 micron pixels. And uh, we can see from this example, and uh, we, we did this actually with uh, Luminera at the trade show in Boston. We was, um, to the end of the show, we tried out uh, this situation and you can see, for example, here in this corner, there's no vignetting on the 30 millimeter lens. So the 30 millimeter lens was on a one inch format sensor and actually when our lens is in front, there's, there's no change of image quality. That's quite a nice result for such a big field of view. Um, so the, the front lens configuration seems to be um, very useful for these applications here, for example. Um, barcode reading codes are typically at a certain long distance. Um, the robot type inspection. Actually, this system here uh, is from a German company, Neurocheck. Uh, they have a robot, or they call it an inspection robot, which has a dome light and uh, our, a camera in the middle with our lens in it. And the robot is programmed to take different features of uh, the engine, so it's usually automotive. And today, in automotive industry, every product that comes on the belt is different, has maybe different uh, components for different customers. So the inspection is very, very flexible. You have to inspect many different parts and they can go from maybe one meter away to take a picture of the whole engine. <coughs> they can go to maybe a fifth of a meter. And by doing that, you zoom in by a factor five. So if you go five times closer and refocus, you get your five times zoom. So you can actually see a lot more detail. Um, and the very obvious application is package sorting. <coughs> And this has really caught our attention. Um, there has been, in the recent months, a lot of requests from the logistics market for uh, package sorting. And um, we'll talk about the, the constraints here. Typically, what you have is if it's a high package, you need to have a big field of view. And if it's a small package on the conveyor belt, down in the belt, it needs to be, it's far away. So then you need good resolution to see the code. So what people actually are looking for here is the front lens configuration with big field of view and high resolution. So typically asking for the one, one or 1 or 1.1 inch sensors. And that's where we don't have a solution yet. We'll talk about why in just a minute. Um, then bottle inspection is another one, different size bottles. And there's a lot more examples, but just to give you an idea here. Um, now let's look a little bit about uh, the mathematics, how we calculate the working distance in the front lens configuration. Okay. So first let's start with how our lenses are characterized. So we already said that the, um, the ring pushes down the lens with current. So the lenses are really current controlled. 
not voltage controlled, but current controlled. And with the increasing current, you have a linear increase in force that pushes down. Um, the membrane is like a spring. So the more you push, the more it will move down. It's also linear. And actually it turns out that the optical power is uh, in a linear relationship to the current. So this is very useful. When we characterize our lens, we maybe do um, 11 current steps and find this curve for each lens. Now, we can change a little bit this um, curve by putting in more liquid. If we put in more liquid, everything goes up. It also goes up if the temperature goes up. Yeah. And we can also change the slope by um, adjusting the membrane. So a, um, a softer or thinner membrane will give you more range. So if a customer, for example, uh, the EL16 goes from minus two to plus three diopters, if somebody needs to have twice the range, maybe minus four to plus six, what we can do is design a lens which has a membrane that is half the thickness, and then we will get twice the range. So that sounds great. You would think, why don't we always have thin membranes? Um, the issue is that the thinner membranes, first of all, they're a little bit slower, um, but also the thin membrane will have an issue when the lens is upright. When the lens is standing upright, you have gravity that pulls down on the liquid, and the thin membrane will have a little bit like a small belly. So for the quality of the optics, it's better to have a thick membrane. But we have these, uh, these options, and like the EL1640, basically this lens here has uh, two standard configurations. And the thick membrane is going from minus two to plus three diopters. And usually that's enough for most vision applications. It's usually enough. Um, but if you have very high magnification, like microscopy, then sometimes it's better to have more range. So there's also a version with um, 20 diopters, basically a four times thinner <coughs> membrane. And uh, that goes from minus 10 to plus 10 diopters. But that lens really has to be used with optical axis vertical because of the quality then. But that can be useful for, uh, for microscope systems to get a bit extra range. Now, um, this word um, diopter, um, maybe it's not yet clear to everybody what it means. So a lens that has zero diopters, basically here, when you cross the zero, no, when you cross the zero line, zero diopters is like just a piece of glass. It's like no lens. So if I, if I look through this lens here, it's more or less flat. So there's, there's no change at zero diopters. And diopters is one over the focal length. So at one diopter, the lens has a focal length of one meter. At two diopters, it has a focal length of half a meter. Yeah, and at five diopters, it has a focal length of fifth, fifth of a meter. And this is actually a nice way for us to calculate. It's actually like when you go to the eye doctors and you get your glasses. Yeah. So if you have um, two diopters on your glasses, you can basically put your glasses in front of the camera and you change the working distance from infinity to half a meter. And this is how we can calculate. Um, so in the world of diopters, you can just add two, two lenses together. So if you have two lenses and they're close together, we can use a thin lens equation. And then you can basically calculate the focal length like this, but it's easier to do diopters like that. And so if we look at um, a front lens configuration, we basically say these are two thin lenses. And um, if the first lens has a certain working distance, the diopter change of our lens in front, you can very easily calculate. So if we start off with an infinite working distance, then um, if you add zero diopters, it stays. And if you have now up to five diopters on this lens, you will add up ends in a working distance of one fifth of a meter. And now our lens goes from minus two to plus three, not from zero to five. So instead of going from infinity to a fifth, what we do is we start out at maybe half a meter. So typically for this kind of demo here, the 
the Siemens optics are set at the object distance of half a meter. And then you can go with minus two diopters, you can go back to infinity. And with plus three diopters, you come to a fifth of a meter again. So basically, here's your typical setup for um, front lens configuration. And this can go into all directions. Yeah. So there's a few examples here. We have the minus two to plus three. And here we have the example we just talked about, the 500 millimeter standard working distance, go from infinity to 200 millimeters. Um, but for example, the, um, the thin lens membrane can do minus 10 to plus 10. So technically it's possible to have a system that goes from infinity to 50 millimeters, because 20 diopters is uh, equivalent to 50 millimeter focal length. So if, if the imaging lens is set at maybe 100 millimeters, you can go with minus 10 to infinity, with plus 10, you go down to 50. Move on here. One other aspect with the front lens configuration um, is the field of view and how, how we uh, influence it you know, with the lens that we put in front. Because um, if you have a very wide field of view and you put our lens in front with a 16 millimeter clear aperture, at some point you start to cut off the light. So here we see um, a drawing actually of a 12 millimeter lens. And uh, we see that when our lens is mounted in front, um, if we now, for the 12 millimeter lens, if we work with a half inch sensor, the um, horizontal field of view is 28 degrees. So this is drawn to scale. The 28 degrees is okay. It goes nicely through our lens. But if we now want to look at the, um, the two third inch sensor, which is 50% uh, bigger, right? So then we would need a 38 degree field of view. And uh, here we can see that this starts touching the housing. So because of our limited aperture size, I would say from about 30 degrees horizontal field of view onwards, we start to cut off some light. And first you cut off the marginal rays. And at some point, at 38, you start, off cut, you start cutting off the chief ray. So when you cut off the chief ray, you have cut off half the light. So then you have um, pretty strong vignetting. So in practice, um, with the EL16 in front, we can only achieve something like um, 30 degrees field of view with um, just a little bit of vignetting or no vignetting. And this is now summarized in this table here. <coughs> Um, this is a very important tool, and uh, we'll spend some time here to understand. We look at different sensor sizes, so the quarter inch, third inch, half inch, two third, one inch. So nowadays, one inch sensors are becoming very popular. We have a lot of inquiries here for one inch now. And then we also look at a large sensor, 30 millimeters diagonal. This is typically an F, an F or an M42 mount camera. So sensor sizes here. Then we also look at the um, S mount versus C mount because for the small sensors we have the opportunity to work with S mount lenses, not for the large sensors. And then we look at the different focal lengths. So again, this is the focal length of the fixed focus lens. We go from wide angle, six degree, uh, six millimeters, up to very small angles, uh, 100 millimeter focal length. And um, here we look at what is possible with front lens configuration or back lens configuration only. And here's a section which works for both. Um, so um, what we see here in this part is this diagonal. So the, um, for example, a rule of thumb, which I'll use for a one inch sensor, the shortest focal length we can propose is 25 millimeters. And then we have uh, about 30 degree field of view and yellow means it's uh, okay. There's a little bit of vignetting. Okay. Green is perfectly fine. And then orange means um, potentially possible, but you have to do custom optical design. And the red is not possible. Uh, it is too, 
to extreme. So off the shelf, what we can combine are one inch formats with 25 millimeter lens, and you can now cut everything in half. So half inch format will work with half the focal length, so roughly 12. Okay. So basically third inch with eight, two third inch with 16, but this is this diagonal. This is what we can do for C-mount lenses. So with S-mount, we have a bit more opportunity because the S-mount lenses, they are actually very small. I even have one here um, to look at. So the S-mount lenses, quite often, their um, aperture is in the front um, and they're more compact. So this is one, one S-mount lens, which has actually 7.2 millimeters focal length. Um, this would be the basically here. And we can use it with a format of maybe a half inch format. So here we see this is possible um, because we can be closer to the aperture stop. So with, with our lens in front, basically we, we get a lot closer. And then the situation that we have here, um, basically this distance is shorter and then you can have a bigger field of view. So that's why um, if it's okay to work with a small sensor, then the S-mount configurations are actually very nice. Amplification of about 0 0.4. Um, the working distance at zero diopters, meaning flat lens again, um, we had 160 on the EL1030 and 200 millimeters on the EL1640. Um, so is it clear why there's a longer standard nominal working distance for that lens? Basically, EL 1030 on the left, EL 16 on the right is the thickness. So it's about the three millimeter difference in thickness. So in this situation here, you move the lens a little bit less away and you end up having a longer working distance. Um, and the Z range that we get, basically both of these lenses have five diopters of range. But um, because we started the longer working distance, we can also get more tuning range with the EL16. So 40 millimeters uh, is what we get. And 40 millimeters is usually enough to look at some PCB components, electronics. Um, yeah, and then for example, on a half inch sensor, we get the horizontal field of view of about 18 or 20 millimeters. Now, um, if somebody now would like to go to a longer working distance than 200, maybe he says, I need to have 250 millimeters to 200. And you realize, okay, this back lens configuration, it's very close, you would like to use it, but you actually cannot get further away because your 50 millimeter lens would technically have to go closer to the camera, right, to get further away. Um, there is one little trick which we can apply to some lenses. <coughs> For example, here, this, this lens from Schneider, um, the way it's designed, it has here, it has here this, um, this ring at the back. So most lenses, they just have um, a setting for the optic distance can screw from infinity to maybe you know, 0 0.1 or 0 0.2, but uh, you can never go further away than infinity. It's always the end. But this lens, you can actually focus behind infinity. So you can, you can go closer to the sensor so that actually your, your, your object plane is, is too far away. And another trick you can do is um, this metal part. If you take the metal part from the 38 millimeter lens. It is five millimeters shorter. So by doing that, we can actually get this lens closer to the camera. So that's quite a nice trick. Um, the EL 1640, when you screw this in, you basically now can, um, 
you can decrease by five millimeters the distance that you're uh, from the sensor because you have the shorter metal part. And what we did here is we put five millimeters of spacer at the top. So what happens here in this case, we try to be equivalent with this situation. So the, the five millimeters we save on this side, we put on the top. So you can compare now um, actually this data where you have 40 millimeters of range. And this is uh, basically the from G mi minus two to plus three. We can compare to this situation here where we have minus two to plus three is about 50, 50 millimeters. So we have here now increased the range a little bit by moving our lens basically closer to the aperture. And if we take away the five millimeter spacer, then we can actually have here um, a working distance that goes beyond 200 millimeters. So you can probably go to about uh, or we could try it out later, but we could probably go to maybe 300 millimeters instead of 200 because then we, we can remove this, everything goes closer. Yeah. So this is a quite nice uh, lens. Now, unfortunately, it's a bit on the expensive side, so um, not everybody can afford this kind of brand, but um, it works very nicely. But maybe this trick can be repeated with also, also some other lenses, which are maybe not the standard build of a uh, you know, typical C-mount lens. Um, then for back lens configuration, here's an example of M42 mount cameras. Um, the sensors can be much bigger. So here we have a GDTS camera from Dalsa, which has a 30 millimeter diagonal. And the uh, Schneider Apokompalan lens, 60 millimeters, usually from the flange, the sensor has um, a distance of about maybe 50 or 60 millimeters. So we can calculate actually what it is because we have our um, EL1640 at the back in this version here, M42 mount. So it's M42 on the front, female, and on the back, male. And then there's 13 millimeters of spacers and 12 millimeters from the camera. So 12 and 13 is 25. This here is 30. So 55 millimeters from the flange to the sensor. And in this configuration, we get a working distance range from about one meter to 380 millimeters. This is tested for logistics. So this is the very typical case. So we have a box, which is maybe um, 700 millimeters high. Yeah, so this is your, your typical uh, working distance range for a package sorting. And what we can see now um, without our lens, so if we put an empty tube, we have, uh, looking at a white piece of paper, we see the, uh, the lowest F number has a bit of vignetting by design. It's the normal for the lens. And F8 has a flat, uh, no vignetting. And now when we put our lens in addition, we actually see that both of this is unchanged. So by putting our lens at the back, um, in the, you know, the front you have a large aperture, but at the back, the aperture is a bit smaller, so maybe 20 millimeters, not even. So it's actually a very good location to put our lens and we don't cut off any light. So we can really see that with our lens at the back, it stays the same. And also in this case, distortion was the same, resolution stays good. Um, it's quite a nice solution if somebody can go for the large format sensor. By the way, um, if there's a footnote here, like test report available online, and there's a link here, then we can always um, look at more details. So actually, I, I don't know if I'm, if I'm connected. <laughs> um, let's move on. So the um, 60 millimeter lens is one, and then there's another example, which is quite special. Um, Apo Rodagon 
75 millimeter lens. Actually, it's a design which is made for 1x imaging. So the 75 millimeter focal length is not so important. You basically have 150 to the sensor and you have 150 to the object. So this lens is right in the middle. It makes a one-to-one -one magnification. It is designed for very low distortion, used to be cop uh, for copying uh, photo negatives. And um, here again, we can put our lens at the back. And this is all empty, empty tubes. And um, in this case, for example, we get um, a Z range of uh, 57 millimeters with a range of plus minus two diopters. And um, remember, for example, we looked at the back lens configuration here. So here with a, a magnification which is lower, we only, like, only get 40 millimeters of range. And usually the range will shrink with higher magnification, right? But here we have a 1x magnification, so more than twice as much magnification, but actually we have a larger range. And this is only possible because we are close, with our lens close to the aperture of this lens here. So we have a pretty high optical leverage. Um, optical leverage is what we call how many millimeters of working distance do we change per diopter. Yeah. So 7, 57 divided by 4 gives you 14 millimeters of change per diopter. So this is what we call optical leverage. I don't know if leverage is a clear uh, term. It is kind of the, um, the, amp the amplification you get. Anyway, so for this configuration, also there is a small change of magnification. That's quite nice. Um, the resolution is unchanged, so the resolution we get with our lens is exactly the same as the resolution without our lens. So we've done a test report on that. And if somebody has um, requirements for 1x with a large field of view, maybe the large camera with this lens can be a solution. Um, okay, and then here comes again a back lens configuration, which is now interesting for the, the laser optics. Um, so we did this test here with a um, F-Theta lens that basically is, is used in the laser processing industry to flatten the field. Yeah, so in this system, we're very simplified because we, we don't have the galvo mirrors, um, but usually the laser will come collimated hit the mirror and the mirror will then go through the F-theta lens and when the mirror goes like to the left and to the right and um, the F-theta lens makes sure that the laser focus is on one plane. So basically what the F-theta lens does is it images this here to infinity. Yeah. So if you look into the F-theta lens by eye you can always see the object perfectly because your eye focuses at infinity. You can look into the lens and you will see it. So now we look into the lens with a camera. And um, the point in laser processing is that you have the small mirrors. So your, your field of view has to be very, very small. So the lens is used for that are typically 150 millimeter focal length or maybe 300 millimeters. And then um, seal optics provides um, two focal lengths like this. And the design of the lens is such that you can unscrew the lenses. You can take, you can, there's a, there's a lens in the front, and I think there's a, some optics in the back, but in the middle you can actually open them. So we can put our lens into the design here, so insert in the middle, and in a way this is a bit like back lens configuration, because you have um, from a fairly large entrance aperture, you get to a smaller beam back here, so our lens here will have enough size for the whole light, you don't lose any light. And um, yeah, that's a, a nice example for um, changing the focus um, several, maybe 10, 20 millimeters on the object. Um, we can then look into this example in more detail, maybe in the afternoon. So the back lens configuration is used mainly for 
um, you know, high magnification things or, or say medium magnification. So um, inspection of components, PCBs, um, contact lenses are actually interesting because they're not flat, yeah, the contact lens is round. So you can scan through the different levels of contact lenses to find uh, some defects. Diamond inspection or, uh, you know, uh, jewelry gem inspection for stepping through the different layers inside a, a glass or a diamond. And then you have the laser processing. Basically, this is a scan head. When the camera looks into the scan head, here's this beam splitter, in here are the mirrors, and here's the antenna lens. So this is kind of the idea that you can um, inspect on a variable focus to get, um, if you do 3D marking, or if you have objects which are a little bit out of focus, you can correct for that. So um, these are the first prototypes, uh, a 1X, a 2X, and this is a bit strange, uh, a 10X lens. But uh, these two are actually very useful, and, and the 2X lens here actually achieves a total of 10 millimeters range. So um, we get two millimeters per diopter on this design of the 2X lens. And this is really something which is uh, nicely designed. So we, um, we can have a look at that. Actually, the, the lens here is quite simple. Um, it has a, a bottom part and a top part. I'll now leave this assembled. So there's some optics at the back as well. But here, what is clear is you have the, the iris right, right below uh, the tunable lens. So that's the best position to put the liquid lens. And the result is a bigger range, but also very small magnification change. Because when you're close to the iris, then changing the focus here will not bend your sheet ray as much. So um, this lens we have uh, portrayed in more detail. There's a whole test report on that lens which integrates our lens. Now um, SEAL has created a, uh, a family of about 16, no 13 lenses that go from 0.13 to 3x. So this table is available. We have the different magnifications, the working distance ranges, and um, yeah, you can see they're mainly designed for one inch formats, in some cases for half inch formats, and even for the larger image circles for the, the 2X and 3X lenses, they can go up to a 32 millimeter image circle. Um, then another company who has designed some customized lenses is Edmund Optics. Um, they integrated the 10 millimeter lens. So mechanically, this looks actually very elegant because it's the same size as the rest of their optics. Um, they've designed four models, 0.15x to 0.75x. And um, these Lenses have a little bit higher resolution than the ones from Seal Optics. They have a uh, lower F number, and they are designed typically for half-inch sensors. Although they told me that um, the two ones here they can easily go to two-third inch, so two-third inch format should be okay as well. And you can see also here the the working distance ranges are about 15 millimeters up to you know actually quite large ranges uh, for the lower magnifications. Um, and then a third company who has now recently um, launched some uh, liquid lens optimized models is a VST from Japan. And um, we have here the, the 1X, 2X models and the 4X. Um, it's basically the THV series is a bit higher resolution and larger um, sensor size, so typically one inch format. And the TCH is more the lower end line for uh, smaller sensors and a bit uh, less resolution, a bit higher F numbers. And uh, I think these are the first four models that have launched. 
um, we will make sure that VST continues and provides more um, uh, models, which maybe also have lower magnification, maybe also from the TCM series, which is higher uh, resolution. It would be nice to have some options there too. Um, and um, the telecentric lenses, uh, the, the type of applications, for example, are um, of course higher magnification things. A typical example is a mobile phone camera lens. So that requires maybe a 2x magnification. So looking for dust and scratches on the curved surface of those lenses, this is a very good tool. Um, one application I like a lot is uh, IC inspection. Um, you look at an object from the top, but you can also look at the side. If you put the mirror here at 45 degrees, you basically look at the side, and within one picture, or at least one camera, you can see the top and the sides. But of course, the, the optical path length to the side is longer, so you need to adjust the focus when you switch between the top and the side view. So. Um, Basically, by having two focus positions, you can here look at the top and all four sides. And that's it. that concept actually has been implemented by several uh, companies, typically Southeast Asia, but also uh, in Europe. Do you have any questions to this? So that microscopy. Um, Basically, it can be quite simple because the options are we put our lens either behind the objective or we put it in a relay system. So two simple concepts, but in detail it gets quite complicated. Um, so we also call it the non-telecentric and the <coughs> telecentric approach. The advantage of the non-telecentric version, it's quite easy to do. You just have to on any kind of microscope, you can usually insert our lens right above the objective. So if it's a um, RMS thread, you need an adapter to C-mount. Um, what you can do is for me to Toyo compatible lenses, we have one model which has a <coughs> mount is a M26. <coughs> and the M26 suits the me to Toyo uh, thread. So that can be used. Um, so mechanically, it's quite easy. You get also quite large uh, working distance ranges. So for example, um, a 10x lens, you can achieve 2.5 millimeters with a lens that has five diopters, and you can achieve 10 millimeters on a lens that achieves 20 diopters. So again, between the five and the 20D uh, is a four times more optical power, and in this case, it is very linear, you also get four times more range. So that's quite nice to calculate, it's, it's very linear. So for um, the low mag, usually the five diopter lens is enough, because two and a half millimeters is quite, quite a lot of range. But if we go to maybe a 40x lens, we would have about 160 micrometers. That can be sometimes a bit on the short side, so maybe for the large magnifications, it can be interesting to work with a 20 diopter lens to get up to 600 micrometers, which then again is quite a lot of range for a, such a high magnification. <laughs> now, the downside about this approach is that you have magnification change. So um, the magnification change uh, over these 160 micrometers is about 23%. <clears throat> So that's quite significant. So um, if you take a stack of images, the, the bottom layer and the top layer will have a 23% different magnification. Um, now, if you do image stacking, um, typically the software for the stacking should be able to cope with the change of magnification because it will always, it will match the pixels. So in the whole stack, it will basically scale the images to the same magnification and then do the stacking. So if you have a good software, this is usually not a problem. Um, if you have to do measurements, it can be a bit annoying because you have to, you have to find out um, what is the magnification at the different points, 
Again, it's quite linear, so probably two points are enough to, to calibrate. But then you have to do this uh, magnification compensation in the software, where you basically look up the magnification according to the optical power, and then you calculate. And the thing is just if you do high resolution microscopy, then scaling the image by 25% is not so great for the resolution, because <coughs> the whole point about high resolution microscopy is not to lose any information. And if you have to scale a little bit, you have to do subsampling and interpolation. So there's a loss of image quality by, by scaling the image. So um, it's a discussion point with customers in this field. Some can tolerate the magnification change. Maybe they have good software to work with it, but some say it's not, it's a no-go. Some customers say we cannot tolerate this because the optical quality is compromised. So then we have to go into the more complicated system of uh, relay. So here the um, object is imaged to infinity. Here you have your infinity space. Sometimes you can also put in a beam splitter for coax illumination. You can maybe um, you know, put in a filter in this space. And then after the tube lens, it gets focused again onto the camera. So we're going to draw it. And depending on the tube length, you can generate different magnifications. Um, with the 25 millimeter lens, we achieve the 3x and 4x for the different tube length. If you go down to a um, 16 millimeter lens, you can achieve maybe 5 and 6, 5 and 6x magnification. Um, you also get a pretty large image circle, so this can be used for uh, very large lenses, which is quite useful. Um, it is not telecentric, obviously, um, and the uh, the Z range that we get is not very big, yeah, like three, two millimeters. It's not a very large Z range. <coughs> so if you maybe take um, a telecentric lens, 3x, where our lens is, you know, as we discussed over here, inserted right behind the aperture stop, you will get a bigger Z range at 3x. It's possible to have more range. Um, but the advantage of this is quite cheap. Um, easy to understand, easy to build. So this can be a good solution for OEMs. One customer is using this to look at um, particles in a liquid, like in a blood sample. Um, so you can take a few pictures in maybe uh, one square millimeter of blood, take different pictures to count the number of I think, particles or blood cells or something. Um, so this concept, exactly this concept, Edmund Optics has made a product of it, so uh, there's a 2x and a 5x version, and basically this is exactly what I just described. They just put a nice housing around, and it looks a bit more as a finished product and not uh, a mix of standard components, but it, it is literally the same as shown here. So this is um, something that can also be bought from the off the shelf. And yeah, so in typical applications for high magnification are inspection of large surfaces like PCB displays. Uh, when you move your inspection system across a large display on a robot, usually after moving from one corner to the other, you, your tolerance is not that great. So you will be maybe shifted by several 10 micrometers. And if you're at high magnification, this will be outside your depth of field. So a typical uh, um, application is the AOI machine that inspects defects on the display, um, running at maybe 10x or 20x. Um, and I mentioned this uh, example of um, particle counting in liquids. Um, yeah, and actually what we also see now can be a very interesting market is um, inspection of these um, slides, so for pathology, I think there's a, a better word for that, where you have, um, you know, samples of um, tissue on a microscope slide. So there's machines that have to look at a lot of those um, slides to document that when somebody dies and you do an autopsy, you get some, some samples of uh, tissue. 
and that's actually quite a big market, is the automatic um, picture taking and analysis of these kind of tissue samples. And this could be an interesting uh, approach for autofocus, and they're typically at um, maybe 20 or 40x magnification. Are there any questions on the microscopy part? What I maybe forgot to mention, which is important, you can see that the, the Z range, it's about five times less if we introduce the relay system. Okay? And this is a this is the drawback of the relay you have a lot less optical leverage, so smaller focus range. So if you're in the 4F system, typically you will need to go for the 20 diopter lens. We don't have a product for the 4F, but these are just typically two um, acromats. It's not so difficult to design. And I mean, I must say, um, universities have been doing this. So we have a few university customers who build their own microscope. They design their own optics. Um, there's a few customers in the industrial space who are looking at this option, mainly because they want to avoid the magnification change. Um, the downside here is also that this relay requires some space. So the focal lengths of these lenses are they're typically, you know, maybe a hundred millimeter focal length. So the 4F is 400 millimeters. It's quite long. Now you can you can fold it by with mirrors. Yeah, you can make it more compact by having a few mirrors in between. Um, but it, it needs extra optics length. Uh, so this is the the new Optem Fusion, which is being promoted today. Um, there's the old Optem, which is the Zoom 70. Um, it's actually a very similar system, but the, um, the connections in between are always C-mount. So it's actually easy to insert our lens in the old Optem system. Um, and there's usually C-mount at the bottom of the Zoom, at the top of the Zoom. So if it's important to that customer to stay focused and use the Zoom, then our lens has to go below the Zoom. If the zoom is only needed from time to time, you know, but the focus changes a lot because of the position uncertainty, then the lens can also be above the zoom. Yeah. But I think if somebody has a zoom, probably he wants to use it, otherwise he could have a fixed magnification. It would be cheaper, right? So I don't know exactly if a, if a customer has a zoom system where he maybe changes the zoom only every now and then to maybe once I want to look um, like a high detail or overview, then it would be okay to be above the zoom and probably you get a bit better image quality if you're above. And, but if the zoom is continuous and has to stay focused while zooming, like if the operator um, sees a defect and wants to zoom in, it's very annoying if you have to refocus. So then it's better to be below the zoom with the liquid lens. Yeah, and um, the Optem model has a little bit um, better optical quality because the lenses are bigger, they have a higher NA. So that's um, a benefit of using the, the Fusion, is a, a bit better quality. But actually even better than the Fusion is the Navitar. Um, especially the, the Resolve 4K is a new one. It's very big lenses, very high NA. So that's a quite high resolution, but also very expensive. So depends on what the uh, customer needs. And um, we're also talking to, um, to Navitar to get them to design our lens into such kind of a module. But basically this liquid lens module is sold by um, Kioptic. I guess we can also sell them. Okay. Um, then I'd like to talk about custom designs as well. So before I go here, we have so far been using off-the-shelf um, OTS, off-the-shelf optics, um, and try to do as, as good as we can. 
But if somebody is an optical designer, so actually uh, Henry does optical design, they can do that in Zmax, and an optical designer will sometimes wonder that how can we how can we take an Optitune lens and then just take an off-the-shelf um, lens which has been carefully you know carefully optimized for best performance. So why do we pay a high price for this lens? Because the optical designers have used the right glass, um, the, the right distances, very high tolerance, high positioning tolerance to get good quality. And now we come and just put something in front. Uh, optical designers usually going to say, yeah, it's crazy because this will not improve the image quality, it will usually make it worse. And actually it's amazing can benefit from some um, optimization. And like one example is now a lens from Koba that I'd like to show you. <coughs> this design has been done um, to get our lens closer to the aperture stop. So it's been designed for the EL1030. Um, the back of this lens is the iris. So if you put this lens into the camera, you have no picture, okay? You need the Optitune lens behind. So um, basically by doing this, we can be very close to the iris and we get better performance. Um, in this case, it was designed to match the one inch format. So we, we've measured and these are our pictures. Um, on a one inch sensor, we basically have just a tiny bit of vignetting for the lowest F number, F5.6. And the reason why they don't go lower with the F number is because of the 10 millimeter clear aperture of our lens. When this was designed, the EL1640 was not out yet. So now um, with the EL1640, we can achieve also lower F number um, and we can achieve also a, a bigger tuning range. Um, so the design here was done for um, 250 to 500 millimeters. So this is a small range if you compare to um, front lens configuration, right? Because again, 500 millimeters, this is half a meter, it's like two diopters. This is a fourth of a meter, so four diopters. You would think that a front lens configuration like this is also a 35 millimeter lens. Here we can do the front end configuration to go from infinity to 200 is much more range. And here we can only go from 250 to 500. So basically we can only get 40%, 40 percent of the tuning range in optical power. This is because now behind the aperture stop, we are more like a back lens configuration type. So the influence of our lens on the focus is a bit less. So for the same amount of diopter change, you get less working distance change. However, you have other benefits, which is um, better optical quality, um, bigger field of view. And um, you can also say that because you're less sensitive, if there's an application which has, um, you know, has to be very sensitive in repeatability, you actually get better repeatability when your lens is behind because if you have less range, um, you also will have a better repeatability. Yeah. So um, this design is really nice. We can go beyond 500 millimeters, actually infinity, if we use the EL1640. I think by now you should understand why. This is a 20 millimeter length, 20.6, I think. And the EL1640 is 17.6, so three millimeters shorter. So if we now use, instead of the 1030, if we use the, um, the EL16, oh, I have too many things going on here. Anyway, so if we use the shorter lens at the back, we obviously we get closer to the camera. And by getting closer again, we get further away. And also the EL16 goes to minus two diopters. The EL1030 goes to minus 1.5, to plus 3.5. So 
the, the focal length range of the EL16 is a little bit more negative. That's why also we get a bit further away. So if somebody needs to have the working distance range longer than 500 millimeters is possible. Um, so, I think now we, we talked a lot about the optics. Um, we have lunch break, right? And then in the afternoon, um, let's focus first on the drivers to get you a bit uh, into what driver options we have. And then I hope we still have time to try out a few things together. Okay. Thanks. So, let's go for lunch.